All right, so an even more dominating answer in D. The force mentioned in the statement is force by seat on child pushing upward. Newton's first, Newton's third law, sorry, force by seat on child equals the negative of force by child on seat. Force down on the seat by child. D is the Newton's third law pair of the first force. The force mentioned up here is the force on a child. D is the force on a seat by the child. So just take A and by, if you've written correctly by A on B, then all you do is reverse the two. By B on A to find the Newton's third law pair and change the sign. Any questions about that one? It seems like you have it straightened out now. Newton's second law um, is something that you've already been using. We used it back here. The net force tells you something about the change of motion, the change of the momentum. Momentum is m times v. m isn't, isn't changing. If we have some physical system, then it's a system made up of a whole bunch of molecules. Unless we change our physical system, m isn't going to change. It's the object is whatever we're thinking of is still made up of the same molecules. So m doesn't go around changing all the time. When the momentum changes, what you've changed is the velocity vector. And so, since m isn't changing, you can write delta m, sorry, delta p as m delta v. And also, well, the other thing I've done is I've divided out delta t here and I should really write it as a derivative rather than as deltas, but I should write it as the time rate of change of v. The acceleration vector a is just our name for the, for the rate of change of the velocity vector. If the velocity vector is changing, then there's an acceleration. However it's changing. Changing its magnitude, there's an acceleration. Changing its direction, there's an acceleration. Changing both, yeah, still acceleration. It's only when the velocity vector is constant that the acceleration is zero. If you're moving at a constant speed in a straight line, then your velocity vector isn't changing, and so your acceleration would be zero. Acceleration is a vector. Acceleration vector points in the direction that the velocity is changing. So you've seen Newton's second law before in, in this guise, and, and now we're going to change it a little bit. And, and write it in a slightly different form. The net force on object A is the mass of object A times the acceleration vector for object A. So I, I've just got a few questions to give you a chance to think about some of these things. Suppose the velocity vector of a car points to the right. So the car is moving to the right has that velocity. The magnitude of that is the number that's showing up right at this moment on the car's speedometer. So, my, my question for you, given this fact, which of the following are possible acceleration vectors? Acceleration vector tells you the time rate of change. So this is a question of how might the velocity be changing? Given that you know the velocity there, which of these is the, is the best description of how the velocity might be changing? 